Um, I'm going to go ahead and introduce Tim Reed, Vice President of X Games. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, year two in Austin, we're really excited. Um, it's been a tough couple of weeks, I think, as we all know, and I want to just make sure we acknowledge and um, you know, our thoughts go out to all the families and communities that were impacted by the, the floods over the last few weeks. You know, there's definitely a lot going on here. And, um, you know, with this whole crew that's been working day in and day out to get this venue built, I think hats off to them. And, you know, it's been a huge team effort between, you know, all of our staff, the partners here at Circuit of the Americas, and, uh, you know, really everyone involved. Huge team effort. So thanks to everyone involved with that. Um, really fired up for this weekend. You know, this is uh, the beauty we work on this year round, but to actually get to the event week, it's something we always get really excited about. And, um, you know, it's always good to see a lot of old friends, see some new faces, and, you know, kind of have everyone come together for a big celebration of uh, all the different sports that we all love. So it's gonna be a great weekend. We've got lots going on, 20 bands, uh, lots of fun things for families and kids to run around and do. Uh, and, and enjoy, and then we also have, and as a big piece of this thing, the 21 different sport disciplines. Uh, we'll have over 200 athletes here, and an amazing subsection of uh, the athletes here up in front of us all today. So um, it's going to be really great. And I just want to thank all of the athletes. You know, it, this all doesn't happen without you, so we really appreciate. You know, your support of X Games, not only the event week, but throughout the years, it's our 21st year, so we're actually legal now, I think, so, you know, I guess that's why we got Budweiser now. Years ago. I don't know why we don't have an English X Games, come on. Soon enough, soon enough. Um, but yeah, so I want to just thank the athletes, it's always, you know, a huge piece of this, thank our sponsors, all the staff that work on this, really. It's going to be an awesome weekend. I'm looking forward to it. So now I'd like to intro Brandon Graham, the host of World of X, host of X Games, and uh, help take everyone through the athletes up here. Thanks, Tim. Give it up for Tim Reed, VP of X Games. Give it up for all the athletes out here today. Give it up for, for me? I don't know. Um, couldn't have said it better than Tim said. We are so pumped, Austin. I think last year, it was about the newness of X Games being in Austin, and that was so exciting, a brand new place after being in 11, uh, 11 years in LA. So to truly experiencing that a year later, I can honestly say that last year was, in my opinion, uh, the greatest X Games I've ever been a part of. And I expect more of the same here at Austin. To be able to call Circuit of the Americas home, to be able to utilize downtown Austin is just so special. And to see the way the city has really embraced X Games and vice versa has been a beautiful thing. And it's been fun. I've been able to cruise around uh, five or six times over the last year filming various things. And there's like a very palpable energy in the city, I think, in general, but especially regarding X Games. And, uh, and I think that's a testament to um, just this city in general. So we're really pumped and enthused in what year two brings when you think about the brand new events, we're bringing in three new events this year. Big Air Doubles, pairing up a skateboarder and a BMXer together. Moto X quarter pipe, and of course, Harley Davidson flat track racing, we're ready to introduce to the X Games audience. So we're really enthused by that. And of course, our music, over 13 artists performing over the four days at X. Our headliners, Nicki Minaj, Metallica. How right is that? Metallica at the X Games, right? I can't believe it didn't happen sooner. So. Um, really enthused by that and just um, ultimately as X Games continues to grow as a festival and we push the boundaries of what's possible whether it's new events or music artists what have you as Tim alluded to right there at the end it's because of these men and women that we have X Games in the first place and that it's 21 years of X Games because this right here sitting in front of you truly is the foundation of X Games and it will continue to be the X Games uh, in years to come, so we can't do it without the athletes. So without further ado, I will introduce each of them, and uh, as many of you who have been here before know, we'll open it up after I intro each athlete. We'll have a microphone, I think, floating around there in the crowd, and then some of these athletes, yes, we'll have mics out there, 
And then some of these athletes will also be available for, uh, for one-on-ones after we finish the group session. So let's get started. Our first athlete here, my left, your right. He's the defending X Games Austin gold medalist in rally. One of the most accomplished resumes on the roster is a former Sprint Cup driver and one of a few Americans who have competed in the prestigious Formula One race series from Manteca, California, Scott Speed. <laughs> Next up, she's 14 years old and she became the youngest medalist in X Games summer event history when she earned a silver at X Games Barcelona at just 12 years old. And congrats are in order. She officially became pro just a few weeks ago from Mesa, Arizona, Alana Smith. All right, this next guy, undefeated since 2006 in BMX Vert. He's the only owner of 15 X Games medals, 13 of them being gold. This year, he's going for an unprecedented, and when you think about it, obnoxious, really, 10 peat. You can hear in his accent, he's from, he's from Pennsylvania, Jamie Bestwick. Our next athlete is the defending America's Navy skateboard big air gold medalist and the youngest to ever win that event. He's a busy guy in Austin competing in three different events, including big air, skateboard park, and big air doubles. Let's hear for 15-year-old Tom Shar. Oh, okay. We throw legend around here quite a bit, but this next guy has easily earned that title. An inductee into the NASCAR, International Motorsports, National Motorsports Press Association, and Motorsports Hall of Fame America. He's a former NASCAR Rookie of the Year, retired in 2005 with the eighth most wins in NASCAR history with 55. And this weekend, he'll attempt to win his first ever X Games medal from St. Louis, Missouri. Rusty Wallace. Our next athlete is the co-founder of the Metal Militia and one of the most rec recognizable names in X Games history and certainly action sports history. He's got a total of 14 medals in 23 X Games appearances across five disciplines in rally car racing and Moto X. He's also a two-time overall winner of the Lucas Off-Road Racing Series. Just call him the general, Brian Deegan. <laughs> Up next is the owner of two medals in Skateboard Park, both earned back in 2013, a gold in Munich and a silver in Barcelona. Barcelona, winner of last month's Red Bull Heartlines contest, showing why he's arguably one of the best at blending park and street skills. He'll be skating in both park and street, current cables. And rounding out our athletes for the day, our next athlete became the fourth youngest AMA flat track grand national championship when he won the GNC one title in 2013 at just 20 years old. He's also won the inaugural Super Prestigio flat track in Spain this past January. Let's hear from one of the guys bringing flat track to the X Games stage from Eatonville, Washington, Brad Baker. And I also want to mention before we turn it over to you guys that we did have uh, Austin native actually in defending BMX Park gold medalist Chase Hawk. He was supposed to be here. Uh, turns out that there was a conflict in his schedule, but if any of you guys are interested in having a one-on-one -on -one with him later, you could track down Crystal and she will schedule a time because I think uh, 3.30, 3.30 I'm told Chase Hawk will be here, the local boy, to talk about uh, defending his gold medal. So we're going to open it up to you guys here, uh, guys and gals, but I, I guess I'll open it up and uh, I think we've got, yep, athletes got mics. So right off the top, I, I guess for uh, a lot of you here, this is second year just like for most of us at X Games Austin. What's it like? competing here at Austin, this crowd, uh, compared to previous X Games stages, whether it be LA or, or when we went global. Uh, Brian, I guess we'll start with you, the general. I mean, you've, uh, you've competed in nearly every city we've hosted X Games, so how does uh, Austin hold up? I'd say uh, this city's been, it's been fun. You know, we come down here with the, 
the whole family and uh, we go downtown and hang out and been here many times and uh, I really enjoy it. I think this is one of the, the places we come and actually look forward to coming and competing. And, and the competitions, I mean, they only last, you know, you know, maybe a few hours at a time. There's a lot of time that you have to really kill and go check out the city and do other things. So this is a place we really enjoy, you know. My first stop was San Francisco in 99 and, you know, I've been to many different X Games, different locations and LA was nice, you know, close to home, but I mean, it gets a little ridiculous with all the people calling for free tickets. And <laughs> so it's kind of cool. Texas only has to go out a few, so it's pretty good. So we got that from, from a seasoned vet. So I turn over to one of our two X Games rookies up here, Rusty Wallace. Rusty, um, Austin, you, you've been here before. Obviously, you know the city pretty well, but uh, what's your take of uh, just the X Games stage out here in Austin? Uh, it's, it's in, I just walked a course a little while ago that I'll be running on, and uh, the whole place is incredible. I've been hearing about this track for a long time and what it took to get it built, but the ESPN, I've been with ESPN for nine years when I was doing NASCAR broadcasting, and I love all the ESPN people. They've treated me great, but just to come down here for my very first time and compete in X Games is something I thought I'd never do, and I thought I'd never be in Austin doing it, and uh, I'm pumped about it. I've been uh, waiting for this moment for a long time, and... Uh, I don't know how it's going to turn out, but I'm going to give it hell. We'll see what happens. Out of the booth and on the truck. All right, so let's open it up to uh, you guys out there. We've got microphones floating around, so let's get it started. Just to follow up for uh, Rusty Wallace. Uh, Rusty, did you, can you, for those that are going to be surprised to see you on this, uh, on this list, uh, what, what, what gave you the idea to be an X Games driver? I got a phone call from ESPN, number one. They kind of teed me up on the idea, and I've been... I got it offered to me a couple of years ago, and I couldn't do it because I was just too busy. But uh, quite honestly, I just uh, I miss driving. I miss driving a lot, man. I, I got out of the car probably too quick, and today I'll never forget the day I got out of the car down in Homestead, Florida. I looked at my friends and family and said, what the hell did I just do? But I did it, and I've been doing TV for a while, and I've really enjoyed that. But I, I just love driving, and I love different disciplines, and I've been watching the... Uh, these trucks for a long time, how radical they are and how fun they are to watch. And Robbie Gordon's a buddy of mine, and so him and I have talked a lot about it. And I did a little testing before I said I'm going to do it. I, did, I don't want to come here and look stupid. I want to come here and run good. And there's no doubt this is way different than anything I've ever done. But I'm hoping with some good practice and like I've been doing and getting ready, I'll be ready. But uh, a lot of people ask me why I did it, and I, I did it. I told them because I want to. And I, and I think I'll do okay in it, you know, but uh, I do miss driving a lot. Anyone else? Hi, my question is for Brad Baker. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what you're looking forward to in the new um, flat track course and what your hopes are for flat track racing in Austin? Uh, I think what I'm mainly looking forward to is just, uh, you know, stacking up against uh, the rest of the great, great athletes here. You know, uh, flat track has been a sport that's been around for a long time, but it's never really been compared on a, a stage like this. So uh, I think that's what I'm looking to forward to the most. And um, I think uh, the track that we have is going to be pretty decent. You know, with all the rain that's been down here, it's been difficult for them to uh, really get a great surface for us. But we're going to have a practice here in a little while see how that shakes down, but uh, I think it's going to, you know, basically showcase what uh, our skills are on motorcycles and, uh, and the great intense racing that flat track racing is, so I think it should be good. Uh, follow up for Brad on that. Um, they're made it a permanent track here. What does that kind of say about the dedication to it and uh, kind of the work they put into it to create a track that's going to be here for more than just a weekend? Uh, it's really cool, um, you know, it, it's, uh, it's always a, a difficult process for track builders to, to, to build a track in, in just such a short time and especially with the, the weather that's been down here, but it's really cool that they're uh, planning on making it permanent. Um, a lot of uh, MotoGP races and racers have, uh, you know, cross-trained with flat track a lot and we've, uh, like say Indianapolis is, has uh, gone kind of coincided with the MotoGP there. Um, so I hope maybe that we'll be able to get an AMA Pro Flat Track Grand National here when uh, MotoGP comes to down, and uh, I think it'll make a, for a really good venue for flat track. Question for, uh, for Scott. As someone, who's, as someone who's made the transition to X Games from other forms of motorsport racing, do you have any advice for Rusty on what to expect this weekend? 
man, just have fun. You're going to love it. It's, so much, it's just a cool atmosphere. I mean, I just enjoy it. It's so much different than anything I've ever done. I think you've ever done. It's, uh, you know, since I was nine years old racing, I've never had just a one race. It's always been a series. There's never been like a one event. So this is like a little Olympics for us. And it's, it's such a different vibe. You just have to sit back and enjoy the ride and take lots of pictures. Um, hi, this question's for Jamie. How comfortable are you you're going to get the 10 feet? <laughs> uh, about as comfy as I am lying on a bed of nails. <laughs> if that's any... So idea. extremely. Well, you know, that's how we are. You're either taking pictures or you're uncomfortable. And I think um, when, you're, uh, when you're at the top of the sport, you know, life isn't comfy. It's, uh, it's uncomfortable. And it's, you know, that's what the X Games does. You know, it's... Um, it challenges the best in the world, whether you're the uh, first-timer or you're a seasoned veteran. But uh, for me to say I'm comfortable rolling into Austin, Texas, that I'm going to get 10 in a row, I'd be lying. You know, there's a lot of great riders, um, myself being one of them. Uh, I have to respect the ramp. The ramp is always the determining factor to who wins and loses. And, uh, you know, if I get 10, great. Um, I don't really need 10. In fact, it's... Uh, I think it's about time somebody else won it, to be honest, you know. I'm not going to throw a contest, I never have, but um, for the sake of my sport staying around, could be beneficial if I lose one, but um, I haven't put 364 days worth of work in to come down here and just uh, roll over. So, yeah, I'll be gunning for it. You know, I've got a lot of great competitors that are going to do the same, and um, but uh, my goal was to always, you know, go one better than Tony Hawk. What are you laughing at, dude? I mean, Tony, Tony held the record. You're, so you're openly admitting, uh, of course, the first blunder was adding Nicki Minaj in front of Metallica. Huge, it's an order thing. Huge, it's an order no, no. thing. Huge, no, 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 no. Friday no, night, Metallica. Honestly, side. bro, that speaks volumes no, about no, no. you and your shaved legs. So <laughs> let's, just, let's just get that thing straight. All right, okay? Jamie, straight thank you so game. much for you're, your time here you're today. You're welcome. You're absolutely welcome. And you know what? While we're here, let me just mention, just joking, but uh, no, I'm not. You see me over there? I'll give you everything you need to know, okay? Five bucks ahead. All right. Um, yeah, I've worked hard, so I have every right to go for 10. Uh, seven was the goal to beat Tony Hawk. I did that. Um, so there really is no pressure on me. Um, it's just the expectation of the X Games, the crowd, my sponsors, the guy with the shaved legs, and uh, of course, Nicki Minaj. <laughs> I'll pass it over to my son. <laughs> Who else? Oh, hey, there we go. This is for Brian. So, Brian, you have uh, competed in a lot of different disciplines. Is there one moment that is the most memorable for you in X Games? And uh, what would it take to top it? Yeah, that's, a, that's actually a tough question. It makes me think back to many memories. But I'd have to say, as an athlete, you know, listening to you know Jamie speak, it's when you win, you want to come back and win again, and there's so much pressure, and then you win again, and then people expect it again and again. It builds, it builds so much pressure, and maybe it's just the pressure we put on ourselves that's, that drives us to keep pushing further and further. And You know, I, I was uh, at X Games, I think it was 03 at LA Coliseum, and I remember it was Pastrana and I going head to head, and I went for a 360, which I'd never done before on a dirt bike, and I went and somehow barely pulled it off, and I thought I was going to get hurt for sure, but ended up landing that, and then from that move, it was all right, the next event, is you're gonna do it again? So we did over a 100 foot ice jump in Winter X Games. Ended up not making it, you know, falling from higher than the ski lifts to the, to the flats of the ice and breaking, you know, my femur in five spots, both wrists. And then uh, coming back that next year to win that event again, I'd say those are the moments that you remember. You know, those are the, the moments that you, you know, I don't know if everyone, pays attention to, I think the comebacks are the, the biggest stories, and I think that's what makes all these guys the best. <laughs> just the ability to not be as scared as the people in the stands that are sitting there watching, you know? And it could be a little mix of foolishness, and, and I guess skill is kind of how it puts you out there to go out and win. 
Oh, this one is for Alana. You were 12 years old when you won your first X Games medal, and you looked up to the other pro female skaters. Um, now in your career, do you find that a lot of younger girls are coming to you and asking for advice? Um, I mean, I've had a lot of like little girls, so I have three younger sisters, so I'm used to like seeing a bunch of little girls around me. I've had girls around my sister's age come up to me a couple of times and ask me a couple of things, and it just honestly makes me think when I was little and going up to all of those pros and asking what they think I should do and knowing that at such a young age that there's already little girls coming and doing that just makes me the happiest person alive just to be able to <laughs> be doing what I love and it's taken me this far. Question for Tom Shar. Um, we heard Jamie talk about expectations uh, coming up as a 10 Peter. Uh, we saw you win uh, last year downtown on the Vert um, gold medalist. Uh, what are your expectations uh, for a 2 Peter? Um, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just going to skate and have fun and see how it goes. I don't really I don't plan on winning or anything. I just want to just have fun and see what happens. Just, I mean, I love skating, so that I'm able to do it for, I guess, a career. It's, it's amazing. So I just want to have fun. Um, aside from the, well, this is for the youngsters. So Corinne, um, Tom, Alana. Aside from the influence that your age has, which is outstanding on the up and coming generations. Um, there is so much emphasis placed on your age when you are entering into events. Do you really feel like it has, do you look at yourself and view yourself as it's an advantage, a disadvantage, or it's completely irrelevant to your performance? <laughs> no, I feel it feels pretty, I mean, I'm pretty young, not as young as them, but when I first started skating X Games, it didn't really feel any different, like the age um, difference or anything. Uh, I mean, I've grown up my whole life skating around pro skaters, and they have too. So it's kind of it's pretty normal, I guess, in a way. I'm not sure they feel the same way. I got a question for Rusty. Um, so what made you decide to come out of retirement to uh, compete in off-road truck racing is the first one. And then uh, why did you choose trucks as your discipline to compete versus any of the other disciplines? I, uh, I've been watching the trucks for a long time and I really like them. I like how they look on the track. I like the shows they put on. I've been watching them run all in, in, alongside the Indy cars and the special events. I watched what happened out in Australia. I watched all that stuff and saw how excited they were and how the people were just going crazy in the grandstands. And when I got the opportunity to do it, I jumped on it because I was just such a big fan of it right off the bat. I've been doing NASCAR stuff my whole life and I've won at that. Uh, and uh, I told you earlier, I just miss driving a car of any kind, any type of motorsports vehicle. But that one there just kind of turned me on. And uh, honestly, that was the first offer. And uh, so when I got behind it and started doing a little bit of testing, I got feeling pretty fairly comfortable. Uh, I, granted, I'm not in competition with the guys out there yet, but uh, that, that was the reason. Uh, just, I had to offer opportunity, I'm a big fan of it. Question for Scott Speed. Uh, given your background in Formula One, do you feel a degree of added familiarity with Circuit of the Americas? Do you communicate with other F1 drivers about the track? Um, I actually never drove this track in Formula One, um, but funny enough, my teammate in Formula E raced F1 last year, so we joked about it coming here and how much different my experience is here for X Games than his is here for Formula One. I mean, this is much more of a fun, laid-back crowd uh, on an infinite scale to, to a Formula One race. So uh, I just had a little peanut butter and jelly sandwich over there, for example, which was, I thought, the greatest thing ever. Uh, wouldn't be having that in Formula One race. So it's just a much different, more laid-back, fun experience. Anyone else? All right, well, I think that's going to wrap it up for the uh, group session.